record? Okay, great. Okay, so Hillary, we'll do the recording. Done. All right, sorry about that, Deepak, go ahead. No worries, thank you, Charles. Um, yes, so my name is Deepak Charyan. I'm an oceanographer at NCAR, um, and I've been really lucky to have spent uh, the last few months thinking about this group by problem because I've been lucky enough to get some funding for it, thanks to a NASA access grant uh, to Joe Heyman, uh, and also some money from the NCAR Earth System Data Science Initiatives, or really NSF. Um, and all of this work was inspired by many discussions in Pangeo community. Uh, so first, I kind of want to apologize because the first half of this talk is a repeat of stuff I presented at the DASC Distributed Conference. So I think some of you there, but not, but not all. So I thought we should at least recap that. Unfortunately, even the jokes are the same, but at least hopefully they're funny enough that you'll still laugh again. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this, yeah, so this package is called flocks because flocks are groups of animals and we think about group bias. Um, Right, and so what is a group by? It's kind of a jargony term. Uh, so it's also known as split apply combine. It's just a very common analysis pattern in many scientific fields. You probably know this uh, as something like binning, histogramming, or compositing. Um, and so I've, this talk has a bunch of these schematics. Uh, and so here's one on the left. Um, and so you'll see a dask array with three blocks. So there's one, two, and three. And each of these colors represents a different group. And you can see that they tend to repeat and there are multiple groups in each block. Uh, and so an example for this kind of computation could be you take the area of a grid cell, you group by crop type and you sum it. So this would give you the land area for a specific crop type. Uh, in oceanography, you would do things like group by bins and temperature in certain bins. So you're averaging some field over some temperature contours. Um, Right, since Hillary is here, you could do that over many heat wave blobs thingies. Um, and so, you know, the idea is basically you go through each block. And so for each of them, you want to sum all the observations in the orange squares to get a final value. And similarly for all the other groups. And so this is what your final reduced uh, computation looks like. You could, in climate science, you would also do something like group by so phase. So you get composites for, you know, El Nino years, La Nina years, stuff like that. Another common version in climate science is what we call climatologies, um, which is really just a term for group by time dot month, where the idea is you take all the January's, average them together to get a final value. Uh, and just to be clear, these little colors here, each different color represents a different group. Um, and you, you're usually accumulating values within each group to form the final result. And we're gonna be looking at a bunch of these schematics. Uh, another common group by problem is actually resampling or regridding. Uh, so in time series, you could go from, let's say, a bunch of daily uh, sample data to monthly. Uh, and so in X-ray, this is and uh, pandas. This is actually implemented as a group by operation under the hood. Uh, it's just the groups have a different pattern. So it's a very common pattern. And unfortunately, uh, it somewhat commonly fails when you try to do it with really big data sets using the whole Pangeo software, such as X-ray plus task. And it's been like pain point for a while. And there's been a lot of work uh, trying to fix it. It's improved, but it's still kind of painful. And so to illustrate that, I'm going to take this one data set. Uh, it's just ocean temperature. You can see it's four dimensions, this time vertical uh, latitude and longitude, basically. <clears throat> this is on the Pangeo cloud. Uh, it's climate model output for the ocean from uh, the GFDL lab. Um, the real important thing really for this talk is that this data set is monthly mean. So each time step, in here in time is a monthly mean. So there's a January mean, then a February mean, and it's chunked so that there is one uh, month in a uh, time, right? So it's chunked one in time basically. And so these chunks are kind of big in space and small in time, and that's kind of important. And so I'm gonna show two group by operations with um, that data set. The first one is this monthly climatology thing. You know, here's a little X-ray thing on how you would compute that. Um, and you do this and here's what the output would look like. You've re removed the time dimension. You've got a month dimension. There's only 8,000 tasks. This ends up being pretty nice. The group pattern for this particular operation looks like this. Again, each color represents a different month. There's a little gap between two squares. Uh, that means they're in different blocks, right? So it's one group per block. Uh, and so in this case, the X-ray thing just works. Uh, here's another problem. So this one I'm doing group by regions. And in this case, I just chose a bunch of longitudinal bins, but you could think of uh, various spatial patterns and you want to average over them, right? Uh, so in this case, um, you know, I did longitude bins, so that longitude dimension disappeared. It became very small. But if you look at the output, you'll see that there's 100,000 tasks. A lot of these chunks are really small. And so that's already a sign that some, it might not work well. 
And the group pattern here is here illustrated for two different blocks is that you have a bunch of different groups uh, and they repeat and each uh, block contains all the groups, right? So that's how this group pattern looks like. And so if you try to compute the second one, um, right, one group per block, many groups blocked, you compute the second one, uh, you eventually end up with something like this that unfortunately might be familiar to many people on the stock. This is the dash dashboard. When you try to compute that, you see a lot of reds, which means a lot of communication um, and not much computation happening. If you look on the left, you'll see that memory usage is kind of high. This is 120 gigabytes. The entire data set is uh, half a terabyte. So this is like a, qu um, a quarter of the data set is in memory, basically, right? or a half of the data set, actually. And so it's kind of high memory. It doesn't actually fail. You can try and solve this by throwing more workers, more memory, et cetera, et cetera. And so to re understand why um, it ends up being that bad, you kind of understand how X-Ray does things. Uh, and so here's again a schematic where there are many groups per block in this dask array that has four blocks. What X-Ray does is it basically tries and sorts. In data frame land, you would call this a shuffle. Uh, so it finds all the pink squares, pulls them out, and then creates a new array. And then it finds all the blue squares, does that, and repeats. And now you have four arrays that contain all the observations in a particular group. And now you can do whatever sum, mean, whatever you want, then you get the final output. But the problem is this, this first step of just communicating everything everywhere is a big problem because it reads in a bunch of data, splits it up into very tiny chunks and then starts sending it everywhere. Uh, and so this, you know, this, it's, it's hard to do well. Um, and there's a lot of work in DAS to improve this kind of shuffling thing. Um, but my kind of idea was this kind of algorithm doesn't really work uh, so well with how DAS likes to do things, right? And so again, I apologize for repeating the joke, but it's very appropriate. <laughs> so it's kind of like paraphrasing Guilfoyle from the show Silicon Valley. But the code is just really not aligned with how uh, Dask likes to do things. So can we do better? And so the first idea was to try this map reduce approach. Uh, and so the idea here is you have all these blocks. Let's instead apply the group by operation blockwise. So in each block, I'm going to come up and reduce it. And I'm, in the end, I want the mean uh, to do the mean. What I'm going to do is instead split that into two, let's compute the sum, let's compute the count. So for each of these squares, for these intermediate results, I have two values, right? So this you can see is a big reduction in number of points. Uh, it could be a big reduction in number of data. So you, you kind of can get the sense that this is gonna be pretty good memory wise. Then you take these intermediate results and you combine a subset of them. So in this case, I'm illustrating it for two. You combine them to form a new array and now you group by reduce this thing again to form another intermediate you keep going depending on how many blocks you have, right? So for this particular four block problem, you'll end up here. Uh, and so at the end for each group, you have the sum and you have the count, you divide the two, you have the mean, right? And so you can see that this graph is really clear, clean. Uh, and it looks like it worked well. If you do it, uh, it actually works really well. So here's, you know, there's a function XRA reduce in this package and it implements uh, this map reduce thing by default. And so if it works for the problem, like this regional binning thing that you're grouping by spatial patterns uh, for this data set, it works really, really well. So it finishes in 10 minutes, 11 minutes with 12 workers. At max, it uses 17 gigabytes memory, and this is a half a terabyte data set. So suddenly this data set is you know, analyzable on your laptop if you had a big enough laptop, which I find kind of ridiculous. Uh, and so, so going back, I presented two group bytes. The first one, X-ray does well. The second one, actually doesn't do well. Uh, and so for the second problem, I presented this map reduce approach, which can, works really well, as we just saw. And so then I tried it out on this first one, and it fails completely. And we can kind of understand that, right? Um, the, the reason map reduce works well is if you can reduce all your data sets early on in the computation. But now if you thought of this pattern where there's one group per block, you know, you apply your group by reduce on this block, but it only has one group, and it only has one observation in that group, so nothing happens. And then it combines you know, the nearby two or three blocks, uh, but they're all different groups. Again, you're not reducing, you're just concatenating. And so what happens is you read all of the data at the same time um, and you just blow memory really quickly. It fails in 30 seconds. Um, and so this is where I stopped at the DAS conference and I was kind of discouraged because this, this problem on the left, which is this problem of time grouping is really common in climate science. It's almost the first thing you do once you come up with a new uh, climate model run. Um, and so I've been thinking about that since then, so since May. And so there's two things. One is we know what the time vector is usually. Uh, and so we know where these groups are. Um, and the second is because it's time, the groups have patterns. And so we should be exploiting these patterns. So I'm gonna present two examples. The first one is resampling from daily to monthly. 
And the second one is this monthly climatology example that's been a real pain point. Uh, and so resampling, it turns out we can just copy a solution from DAST data frame. So here again on top is a schematic representation of groups. And you know, resampling, you're going you know, from like a daily time series to a monthly time series. Um, and so if you know the months are sequential, right? So January 2021 maybe is here and December 2021 is out there, right? And there's no reason to do a map reduce thing because you know, if you calculate a group by value for this, there's no point in combining it with the value from this. They're completely independent. All you do is end up concatenating, right? So we can keep those parts of the computation separate. Uh, and so the, this idea really is just copied from DAS data frame. The idea is you, you rechunk um, so that all members of a particular group are contained in a single chunk, uh, in a single block, right? So here's an illustration of that rechunk output. So you can see that, you know, if there is a dark element of the dark blue group, uh, it's present in this first block. The oranges are all in the second block. Uh, these purple ones are always in this block, right? And for like, it really depends on how the chunking is and what the patterns are. But you know, for this particular case, this is a very small amount of computation, sorry, communication in the beginning. And then what you can do is apply the group by operation blockwise and it's embarrassingly parallel and it works really well. Uh, so this is implemented. You could call method equals blockwise. There's even a helper function to do this rechunking for you um, because it could help with other problems too. So, it's, so this is one cool idea. It's copied from DAS data frame, now implemented for DAS arrays that we tend to work with. Um, but now let's come back to this climatology problem, right? So this is the group by time down month. And it's still, and you know, here are two properties of those. The groups are sequential. So January is always before Feb. Feb is before March. And then the groups are periodic, so they repeat. So here's a schematic where there are 12 months. So there are 12 groups, the so 12 colors. And it's chunked as four in time. So there are four uh, months in each block. And so if you wanted to uh, pick all the Januarys, you would you really just want to say, I'm going to reduce this block, this block, and this block, right? And we do that to compute the group by. Uh, there's no reason in combining this block and this block because they're totally independent. And we know this because we know where the months are. But because the groups are periodic and the kind of values are distributed throughout the array, you can't just blindly use the resampling strategy. It would be a complete mess. And so we come to the one, um, yeah, so it's periodic kind of like that GIF. Uh, and so I have one original idea here, which is this idea of cohorts or groups of groups. It really comes from this. It's that, well, um, groups tend to occur together. And if we're really lucky, like this particular illustration, we should just pick the groups that occur together. So here, you know, this is a little helper function. It looks for these cohorts or groups of groups. And it figures that months one, two, three, and four are always in the same chunks. Similarly for five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And so we have three cohorts. We can loop over them. And then we do what X-Array does. We subset the array to, but we only pick groups in the cohort, right? So when you pick this first cohort, you end up picking this block, this block, and that block. And then you map reduce that. So you get the result for the first four months. And then you do this one, uh, this one, and that one, and so on and so forth. And so this, as you can see, will work really well. It uses the map reduce thing, but it's really smart. And it tries to avoid combining um, blocks that are totally independent of each other. So you reduce all of that communication. Uh, it need not work really well. So here's one where it's chunked five in time. So there are 12 groups uh, and the chunk size is five. Those are not evenly divisible. So they're, the pattern goes kind of out of phase with your chunking. And I don't really have a good solution here. So here it detects eight cohorts. Um, and it's still going to split these blocks a bunch. Uh, and I think you have to do some kind of rechunking. Uh, it's not clear to me what is better. Do you rechunk to four? Do you rechunk to six? Each of these could help a bit. But otherwise, excluding that one case, um, in general, I'm really excited because this strategy generalizes really well. Uh, so here's the first problem where you have one month per block. And in this case, uh, the cohorts is just going to detect that there's each uh, group occurs individually. So you have 12 cohorts, it's kind of like x arrays thing, it's just gonna pick you know, this dark red square, that dark red square, and then combine them. So it's gonna work really well there. For this problem that we just talked about, uh, it reduces any unnecessary communication, so it works well there. Uh, for the resampling problem, after you rechunk, it's just gonna work blockwise because only these two groups occur together, they don't occur anywhere else. So it's gonna figure that out and do it. And then you have this problem that is kind of out of phase. I don't know what a good solution is. I think we just have to play around with it. Uh, I'm not the only one who had this idea. A week ago, Gabe Joseph from Coiled opened up this issue saying that 
something similar should be done for um, DAS data frame. And it's the same idea, it's this cohort thing, where you look at the group patterns and you decide which you map reduce and you decide which you want to do blockwise uh, and it could work really well. Uh, and so finally, this is my last slide. Um, this package is called Flux. Um, it's intended, uh, I, I'm, I kind of want to do this talk so that people could start experiment, experimenting with it. You can install it using PIP or Conda. It's beta, but a lot of all the tests pass. Uh, I have an open pull request into, pull, into X-ray to integrate this. So in the future, you might be able to do, really near future, hopefully, you'll be able to do mean uh, method equals cohorts. I even talk about this, but you can opt into number acceleration. Um, but I thought one uh, place that we could all chat about is, um, you know, there doesn't seem to be one optimal strategy. It really depends on how groups are distributed across blocks. So I think we just need to test it out with a bunch of data sets and then kind of document the lessons we learn and see if there are other strategies we can come up with. Uh, and so like one, one question for the audience is, you know, are there other common group patterns that we could optimize for? Currently I've mostly thought about time because that's really common. Um, but there's potentially others that we could optimize for that would really help everyone. Uh, so yeah, thank you for listening. Uh, this package is called Flux and it's ready for you to try it out. Thank you.